Hi everybody and welcome to Golden Hour, a show about living your best life. Today I'd like to take the time to wish all of you a happy Valentine's Day. And because it's Valentine's Day, I thought what better topic than to talk about love and how to know if you really love someone. So if you'd like to learn about love and how to tell if you're in love, keep watching. <music> And there are many, many different kinds of love. There's love that's romantic. There's love that's friendship. There's love between a mother and child or a father and child. There's the love that you have for, for your dog. And there's also the silly way we use the word love. Like I love pizza and I love chocolate. But what does it mean to truly be in love? Well, I scoured the internet to see what other people thought being in love was all about. And as I started to research it, I realized I didn't want it to be a rehearsed speech. I wanted to talk to you from the heart. But before I do that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about a story that I heard on the internet. I was watching a gentleman, he appeared to be a rabbi, and he told a story of a young guy who said to someone else, I love fish as he was cooking his fish and about to eat it. And he said, well, why do you eat fish? And he said, because I love it. And the guy said, well, you don't love it if you plucked it from the water and killed it and ate it. What you love is yourself because of what that fish can provide to you. And what he, the rabbi said, is basically a lot of people have that fish love. Sort of like the, I love a flower, so I pick it. Well, if you truly loved that flower, you'd leave it in the ground and you'd water it and help nurture it and grow it. So that's what he calls fish love. Now, when you really love someone, you're not looking at what that person can bring to you. You're really looking at what you can bring to that person. Another person that I researched uh, had a video called The School of Life and he quoted this. He said, anyone can express an interest in perfection. To love is to devote an active charity towards the mistakes and aberrations. So it's loving someone even with their flaws. Here's a couple ways to know if you're in love or if it's infatuation. If you've been out on four dates or three dates or two dates and you, oh my God, I'm in love. That's infatuation because true love takes time. And true love comes from here. It's emotional, it's guttural. Um, it's not physical. It's not looking at the person and, and thinking how physically beautiful they are or how they make you feel physically. It's how they touch you emotionally. If it's all physical, it's infatuation. If it touches you emotional, then it, you might be on your way to love. The other thing that shows that it's love and not infatuation is that when you're infatuated with some, somebody, you don't see any negatives. Think about how many times you dated somebody and because you know the sex was great or they were beautiful, you let the imperfection slide you thought they were perfect. This person does this little gross habit where they have to stick their finger in their sandwich before they eat it, and I just think it's cute. Everything about that person is adorable. You're not seeing any of the, of the negatives, and what happens is down the road, those negatives will surface, and those are the things you'll fight about, whereas true love is realistic, and it can acknowledge that difference, but loves in spite of them loves because of them. There's the difference. The other way you know if you are both in love or if it's just an infatuation is that when you're in love with someone, you can sit down and have the difficult conversations without that feeling that you're rocking the boat. When you're infatuated with somebody, 
Um, you may be fearful to have a conversation about something in your past that bothers you or something that bothers you about them for fear that whatever thing you do is going to end the relationship. But when it's true love, those difficult conversations are okay and neither person runs away. So I want to bring it what I just spoke of and kind of bring it into my life so I can give you my personal take on what it means to truly love someone. And in order to do that, I have to speak about the one great love of my life who our relationship spanned 30 years, from three years of dating to 20 years of marriage to seven years of being best friends before he passed away. And this is how I know that he was my one great love and this is how I know it was true love and not just a fatuation. It started that way as most relationships do. It started as infatuation and even in the beginning of the marriage you're really not sure but somewhere around the two-year mark is where most relationships fail. In, in fact, fact that's what has happened to me in subsequent relationships but Somewhere around the two year mark, even through adversity, you persevere. We had illnesses, we had bankruptcies, we had a foreclosure, we had a time when we were living in our car, we had suffered the deaths of family members, changes of jobs, the birth of our child, all of these things, and yeah, there were fights, and yeah, there were disagreements, but the love never went away. Why did we divorce? Well, we were two people that couldn't make it work, but that never stopped the way we loved one another. In fact, the reason I wanted to get divorced was not just self-serving, it was for him as well. And that's what love does. Love looks to the other person and says, I want to make that person happy. And I knew also that he was wasting his senior years, because he was older, than me in a relationship where we were arguing all the time and I wanted us both to save ourselves. I wanted him to have a quality of the remainder of life that he had left. And after that we became very good friends and we still went out once a week for breakfast and everything. There will never be another love like that in my life, I don't think, or never for that length of period as I'm getting on in years as well. So love never says what's in it for me. Love always says, what can I do for you? It's treating the other person with kindness and charity and looking out for their best interests. It's not personally gratifying like that person who loves the fish. I have high standards on what it means to truly love someone. Would you put your own needs and wants aside for that other person? Would you jump in front of a bullet or a car and try to save them if somebody was coming towards you? Would you give them your kidney if they needed it? These are some things I hold as ways to know if it's really love or if it's just an infatuation. So can you weather the storm? I think that tells if you really love someone. I was married a second time and we couldn't weather that storm. I think that relationship was probably based on infatuation. In fact, when I went afterwards for divorce counseling, the person that counseled us said, I don't know what you guys had, but it certainly wasn't love. But my love for my first husband never went away. And I had to do things that were very difficult for me. I don't like hospitals. Anybody goes into a hospital, I'm probably not gonna show up and visit them, but when he had his stroke, I went regularly. I did something that was very difficult for me, for him. And when I was ill and I couldn't get anyone to help me, he was there. He was my biggest cheerleader. He was always in my corner. So. That's what true love is, guys. It's not that feeling in your stomach where you get butterflies and the person that you see is so physically attractive that your palms get sweaty. It's, it's deeper than that. 
And it transcends divorce. It transcends death. He's gone now, and I think of him every single day, and I cry for him every single day. Not just because I'm grieving and I miss him, which I am, but I'm also crying for him for the life that he missed out on, for how he missed out on our, our son growing up, and how he's never going to hear the birds chirp. So this is dedicated to you, Eric, my one great love. I want to add something about unconditional love. When you really love someone, as I've said before, you love them even if, even through their imperfections, even when they're not so lovable. And so I want you to think back, if you're a parent, to maybe when your child was in middle school and they were having a tough time, and maybe they weren't so lovable, but you didn't turn your back on your child. You loved them anyway. And this is the same way you should treat your spouse or your significant other or your boyfriend or girlfriend if you're truly in love. You love them anyway. I also want to add that physicalness, it, it, being physically beautiful is definitely one of the things that attracts us to our significant other. And my husband was very handsome when I first met him in 1984. And he was still very good looking in his 60s, but the last year of his life, he had a stroke. And he was down to 139 pounds. His hair was disheveled, he was paralyzed. He no longer wore his dentures, and yet he couldn't talk and he couldn't eat. And yet when I went in there to see him and hold his hand, to me, he was the most handsome man I'd ever seen. He was still beautiful to me, and that's love. So I leave you on this Valentine's Day and say, please look at your partners if you're having difficult times and, and try to embrace them anyway. I'm not saying to stay in an abusive relationship by any means, but just to love them when even they may not be the most lovable. And if you happen to be spending Valentine's Day alone, be your own Valentine. Love yourself and treat yourself with that kindness that you would treat your child or your dog with. Treat yourself well today. Go out, treat yourself to a wonderful dinner, buy yourself a present, spend some quality time with your dog. You don't need a significant other. You may want one, but you don't need one. Go out and do some acts of kindness. Happy Valentine's to everyone. I love you all. So if this video helped you in any way, click like, Click subscribe, share, and comment below. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day and go get your shine on. This is dedicated to my one true love, Eric.